Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. previous lecture we discussed about level flight performance and we have come up with a subroutine where we identified what should be the thrust required and the power required when you fly at different velocities and what will be the corresponding trim angle of attack and control surface def deflection required. At the same time we also looked at aerodynamic parameters like Cl by Cd and Cl power 3 by 2 by Cd and its variation with velocity or you can also say the trim angle of attack. Right? For that what we did is we considered a trim angle of attack and then we, we talked about we estimated using that CM and CL equation we estimated what should be the delta A trim from CM naught equation right sorry CM equation which talks about static uh, pitching moment uh, for, for the longitudinal case from uh, for equilibrium you equated that equation to 0 and then figured out what is delta A trim from using the delta A trim and the initial considered alpha trim in CL equation right the aerodynamic model I am talking about CL naught plus CL alpha times alpha trim plus CL delta A times delta A trim. From there you figured out what should be the corresponding CL trim that you need to maintain. In order to maintain that CL trim you have to fly at a particular velocity to generate lift is equals to weight that is one of our level flight condition right. So from there you can figure out what should be the velocity for that particular trim condition or to maintain CL trim. Once you get velocity, now you have CL trim, now figure we can also figure out uh, the corresponding CD for that CL trim which is CD using drag polar which is CD naught plus KCL square right. So CL there will be replaced by CL trim. Once you have CD and you know what is the velocity, now you can figure out what is the thrust required which is nothing but drag that is equals to half rho V square S CD right. So, you know both the variables V and Cd in that particular equation. So, once you know power re thrust required you can proceed to figure out what is power required which is thrust required times the velocity of flight right. So, for when you start this entire procedure to solve this entire steps, so you you are trying to vary the angle of attack right. So, that is considered as an input for this entire steps and then we also solved for what should be the Cl upon Cd for that particular alpha trim and its variation right. So, we also talked about Cl power 3 by 2 by Cd, we just want to see how the power required condition depends upon Cl power 3 by 2 by Cd right and thrust required condition depends upon aerodynamic efficiency Cl upon Cd right. So, we have solved for both the, we have solved for uh, all these variables and its variation with velocity. So, let us now proceed with the same example to figure out what will be the power required or uh, yeah power required for takeoff as well as what is power required for climb right. So, why are we doing this exercise? So, the reason is simple if we consider a typical flight envelope of a UAV right let us assume it is not a hand launch model. So, what you have is a ground roll say take off so on ground it will try to run right and then it will try to rotate. So, what so the time period for which this remains on the ground the aircraft runs on the ground we consider it as ground roll followed by a rotation. And then it starts climbing to the desired altitude right. So, what we call it as climb and then from there you start performing your mission which is majorly dominated by cruise and then say there can be loiter. So, but why we are doing this exercise is because we try to now figure out what should be the power requirement for by the system at each and every phase thereby you can select a particular power plant that satisfies the power requirement or the thrust requirement of all these flight envelopes. 
So, let us now proceed with the same example what I discussed. So, so by doing that we will actually solve again we are going to again come up with a subroutine that helps us to estimate the power requirement for level fly, uh, takeoff during takeoff condition as well as uh, climb condition. And now we will try to ignore this particular portion the rotation portion power requirement during rotation which is very minimal for a unmanned aerial vehicles. Right? So, let us take up the example problem instead of uh, just doing it in a generalized manner we will try to solve it using an example problem. Right? So, what we are going to talk about is subroutine 2 let us assume the first one is subroutine the, the earlier example that we solved is subroutine 1 let us talk about subroutine 2. Okay? So, consider this this is the question we will take it as a general question and then we will solve it yeah we take it as an example and then we solve it for general purpose as well. So, consider the delta wing UAV presented in example example 1 that is uh, our previous example where we talked about level flight level flight performance right. So, has to take off from a bitumen runway with or you can say bitumen runway located at an altitude. So, let us also give the details about this uh, frictional coefficient on the runway with the frictional coefficient of frictional coefficient of 0 0.05. So, runway located at an altitude of 1000 meters with respect to MSL mean sea level. Okay. So, the runway itself the geographic location of this runway itself is 1 kilometer altitude right is at an altitude of 1 kilometer. So, find the power required or say to be delivered by the brushless motor with a propeller efficiency of 0.95 during takeoff okay, when the takeoff angle of attack alpha takeoff let us assume okay let me write it down for the first time angle of attack during takeoff is maintained as 5 degrees. Okay. So, this is our question we need to figure out what is the power requirement during takeoff for this particular UAV which was presented in example 1. What was that UAV? We talked about a delta wing UAV. So, we talked about drop delta wing UAV. So, this is the delta wing UAV that we are talking about uh, which has a root chord of 0 0.9 meters and tip chord of 0 0.15 meters. So, and then the span of 1.5 meters. Okay. So, you can refer to our previous example where uh, we talked about this. So, the lambda for this is 0 0.167 and uh, aspect ratio which is b square by s uh, which turned out to be 2.86 and the reference area is b by 2 again writing it down 
1 plus lambda. So, it turned out to be 0 0.787 meter square. Okay. So, do we need any other details? And we also have the aerodynamic details which you can refer uh, from our previous question. So, now the important thing that we need to observe here is, so it has a frictional coefficient, the frictional coefficient between the tires of the aircraft and then of the UAV and then the, yeah, uh, this bitumen runway is about 0 0.05, right. So, 0 0.05 and we the details of propeller efficiency is also given, right. So, we do you remember when the, so in our previous uh, course we have discussed about what is the output from a reciprocating engine or a brushless motor. So, the output here you have is shaft power P s, right. So, this is a mechanical power that is available from this uh, brushless motor. So, now you need to attach a propeller to it in order to convert this available mechanical power to useful aerodynamic power or power, power useful for aircraft to move forward. So, that we will call it as power available. So, the efficiency of the propeller is given as output. What is the output here from this system is power available, right. So, power available is the output, output upon input, input is shaft power. So, output upon input is the efficiency of this propeller which is power available upon power uh, shaft power, right. So, what we need to identify is what will be the corresponding shaft power that this particular brushless motor need to deliver, okay, for this aircraft to take off from a runway, right. So, now the usual operation of this particular UAV is from an altitude of 1 kilometer, right. That means, what is uh, effect, what is going to affect us is the density of the air, right, that we have to consider at that particular altitude. Now, let us look at what is this takeoff scenario, right. So, let us say it is a wing alone configuration, if you remember properly, this is my runway. So, let me draw the side view of this aircraft. Yeah. So, it is all movable vertical tail and then yeah, you have the nose wheel and in the trike. Yeah, you have this trike, right. Now, let us assume a reference axis which is nothing but the cord line for this uh, UAV, right. It is a wing alone configuration. So, when the aircraft is on ground roll, right, when it is doing a ground roll here that is moving on this runway. So, your direction is parallel to this ground, right. So, the fluid stream velocity that you will encounter will also be parallel to this ground. That and your aircraft orientation is constant, is not it, because of the uh, tires right because of this undercarriage the or, the way you uh, designed the undercarriage so the orientation of this aircraft remained constant when you are running on this runway during the ground roll and the velocity will be parallel to the your flight path in general so the flight path here is nothing but the direct parallel to runway right so zero right so this is your free stream velocity and this is your reference axis that means you maintain a particular angle of attack which is more which is almost constant during the ground run, right. So, that means you need what you need to understand the alpha that you are maintaining during ground run is constant, thereby forcing the CL has to remain constant during this runway, sorry, ground run, okay. So, in general, if you will just look at the dynamic equations and then we will discuss some uh, discuss further. So, let us say this is the direction of the thrust, let us say in the direction of V infinity, T is the direction. So, let us say T is acting in this direction, what you have is drag due to this, right, and then you generate lift perpendicular to flight velocity and the weight of the aircraft acting downward, right, is not it. So, the weight of aircraft or the UAV is acting vertically down. So, again L is acting perpendicular to V infinity and V infinity is parallel to the ground. So, L and W are along the same axis, but in opposite direction, right. And D is in the, in the direction of V infinity during this ground run, right. Apart from this, what you have is friction, 
which is retarding the motion that is acting in the opposite direction of the motion which is mu times w minus l. So, when the aircraft is completely at rest there is no drag and lift. So, what you have is w mu times w right mu times the reaction reaction is nothing but the total weight of the act for aircraft acting, but in the opposite direction right. So, coming back to this now we know for takeoff. So, the UAV has to accelerate from zero to take off velocity right is not it. So, that is what a typical acceleration that we look at within over a period of time right. So, now if you look at the dynamic equation. So, the total acceleration is should be equals to t is in the direction. So, the acceleration that we produce will be in the direction of motion right that is along the thrust here t minus d minus mu times w minus l right. So, let us say this is my the acceleration that I am looking at. So, should be equal to the total force forward force minus the total retarding force which is drag and the friction frictional force here and then the lift has to be balanced by weight. So, at take off this this is the condition that you can achieve right when your lift is balanced by the weight you can you are now no more running on the ground right you are airborne ok. So, until we achieve that particular condition we have to make our UAV run on the runway and then uh, once you reach that particular velocity which enables you to produce a lift which is greater than the weight then you are airborne and the, the frictional force disappears at that particular point. So, till that we need to produce power which will satisfy this frictional drag or the friction that we encounter here. So, now how do you find out what is the power required during this particular phase is not it. So, let us say this thrust that has to be generated by the engine here is not it. So, the thrust that I need to generate by this brushless motor is equals to mass times the acceleration that I need to give to this aircraft for takeoff right. For takeoff I need to produce acceleration. So, that is m times a plus I need to satisfy the drag when I am flying I'm moving at a particular velocity. I need to satisfy the requirement of the system which is drag here and then apart from that there is frictional force right because I am running on the ground right now. So, which is mu mu times w minus l. So, this is the power or the thrust I have to generate if I have to move at uh, if I have to achieve a takeoff velocity with this particular acceleration right. And then so, the power that I need to deliver from this or the power required by the system is equals to which is the thrust required times the velocity as we know very well. So, the velocity here we will consider as thrust required times v takeoff velocity right. So, why we are doing this? It will be higher right power required will be higher at higher takeoff velocity we want to know what is the maximum power required during this takeoff process is not it. So, that means we need to look for if, if the engine can deliver that maximum power it always can satisfy anything lesser than that right by just adjusting the throttle of the engine. So, now I will be able to figure out uh, what is the power required given what is thrust required during the takeoff from this uh, particular runway which is equals to which has to satisfy again the acceleration that you require to produce and then the drag as well as the frictional force ok. Let us now uh, yeah, proceed to further to understand what is this takeoff velocity based up yeah what is this takeoff velocity from aerodynamic point of view right what should be the takeoff velocity. So, now we have again this C L is equals to C L naught plus C L alpha into alpha in general if you refer any of the standard textbooks in uh, related to flight dynamics. So, the takeoff velocity is in general given as 1.2 times of V stall velocity assuming you. So, what is stall velocity so, which is given by so C L max which we discussed many times right. So, stall velocity corresponds to C L max. That means, if I make this E L max and what I assume is I am flying at 
alpha stall. But who is producing that alpha stall? The aircraft orientation, isn't it? But on ground, when you come back to this again, this scenario again, so on ground, this alpha is fixed, isn't it? That is what we discussed earlier. When it is running on the ground, this alpha is flex, fixed. But for UAVs, I do not think it is feasible for most of the UAVs, small scale UAVs, I do not think it is feasible to have flaps, dedicated flaps to produce that CL max, which is the case for a commercial aircraft, right? So, I do not think that is possible. So, what we have to look at is a practical way of understanding the power requirement during takeoff. Instead of adapting to this uh, standard procedure of uh, calculating what is the V stall required based upon C L max and then the 1.2 times of V stall. What we do is instead of stall angle of attack, what we will say is C L prime during takeoff is equals to C L alpha times alpha during takeoff. So, this is nothing but alpha during takeoff. Okay. So, because the orientation is fixed when it is when the UAV is running on ground, hence the angle of attack has to be a constant value here. Right. This is alpha takeoff. So, for this particular alpha takeoff, what will be the corresponding C L that I can achieve without flap deflection and elevators are not effective to change the orientation when it is uh, running on the ground right? and there is no point of doing that. So, the corresponding V prime during this takeoff procedure is square root of 2 w again it has to satisfy I need to run or uh, I need to take my aircraft to a velocity where it, it is able to produce the lift which is equivalent to weight of this aircraft which can lift the weight uh, weight of the aircraft right so there should be a force that can lift the weight or equivalent uh, produce uh, we should produce a force which is opposite to the uh, in the opposite direction of weight and you for that you need to make your aircraft achieve a particular velocity which is v take off velocity what we'll call it is V take off square S times C L prime is equals to W, right? So the C L prime is now defined by this alpha takeoff, which is a which depends upon the orientation of your aircraft during the ground roll, right? And then once you have the C L prime, you will be able to find out what is V prime square. So from here, two W by S upon rho C L prime. So, once you have V prime, then we will adapt to this V takeoff is equals to 1.2 times of V prime. Okay. So, that we will consider that this is a factor of safety, right? 1.2 times of V V prime. So, that when you substitute in this particular equation, you will be satisfying lift is equals to weight more or definitely more than weight here. Okay. Because V takeoff is higher than that C L prime square, is not it? So, V takeoff condition is uh, higher compared to that of uh, the velocity that you need to maintain for C L prime. So, this will definitely ensure that you are off the ground, you are airborne this particular condition. Okay? That is when you can change your orientation. Once you are airborne, then your control surfaces are effective and then you can change the orientation of this aircraft. Okay? So, now we will look at the procedure a bit more in detail, we will write down the steps how to solve this. And moreover, uh, you see this takeoff velocity depends upon density, right? And all our calculations depends upon density because we are talking about aerodynamic forces. And is don't you think is it not mandatory for us to come up with a subroutine that talks about variation of density with altitude, right? So when we're talking that, we'll re what do we remember? Standard atmosphere, right? So before solving this particular example problem. I would like to come up with a subroutine that talks about uh, yeah, density like given a, an altitude of flight as an input, I will get density pressure and the temperature as an output. Right? So, what we are going to talk is subroutine for standard atmosphere. So, most of our flights are limited to say about 13 kilometers, right. So, let us try to like uh, come up with the subroutine for the first two layers of standard atmosphere. We know this is the altitude 
and this is uh, in kilometers right this is uh, on x axis we have temperature uh, like uh, or say the when the altitude is varied what is the change in temperature that is what the standard atmosphere talks about so we have temperature in kelvin right uh, on the vertical axis we have altitude in kilometers so at sea level say at 0 kilometers to 11 kilometers we know it is governed by gradient layer equations where there is a slope here right which is called dt upon dh right it is given by dt upon dh not dh upon dt please understand please make a note of it just for the visualization purpose and to make make uh, like uh, plotting the altitude on the vertical axis make more sense right isn't it so altitude on vertical axis make more sense that's the only reason why this is plotted in this manner but in general this this data is acquired by means of uh, varying the altitude and measuring the corresponding temperature density and yeah sorry temperature and pressure at at, at those altitudes okay so the lapse rate here is given as dt upon dh which is kelvin upon kelvin per kilometer minus 6.5 for the first gradient layer which is kelvin per kilometer okay and then from 11 kilometers to 25 kilometers what we have is isothermal layer so the first layer is this is gradient layer and what we have is isothermal layer so up to 25 kilometers okay so the constant temperature regime so at t at zero altitude is 288.16 kelvin right at this particular altitude of 11 kilometers is 216.66 kelvin okay right so let's now uh, come up with the subroutine so before this we'll just recollect what are our gradient layer equations so the for gradient layer which is characterized by the slope lapse rate what we call is dt upon dh which is t2 minus t1 upon h2 minus h1 right so where h is and then so t at a particular altitude t2 given t1 is t1 plus a times delta h okay so this is one equation that gives me the information about temperature uh, temperature at a altitude right and then what i have is gradient layer equations which is p is equals to or p2 is equals to p1 times t2 upon t1 raised to the power of minus g not by ar okay and then row 2 is equals to row 1 at row at sea level let us say for the first gradient layer t1 row p1 and row r1 is row at mean sea level right so that is t1 is equals to 288.16 kelvin at p1 is equals to one atmosphere which is 1.01325 times 10 to the power of 5 pascal or newton per meter square and density at this row 1 is 1.225 kg upon meter cube okay so the density so the density for uh, density variation again is a function of t2 upon t1 which we have derived using standard standard atmosphere which is minus of g naught by ar plus 1 right so i can find out for the gradient layer right given the altitude let us say in our case which is 2 kilometers given the altitude what i can find uh, i i can definitely find out what is delta h which is h2 minus h1 and then multiplying it with the lapse rate what i get is yeah with by plugging in the information of t1 and i'll be knowing what is the corresponding temperature at that particular altitude using the t2 and t1 and we know what is the lapse rate and r is the universal gas constant for air which is 287 joule per kg kelvin right so by and g naught of course we know is 9.81 meter per second square so plugging in these values what I'll be able to find out what is P2 and what is Rho2. Right? So similarly, for isothermal layers, so isothermal layer is constant temperature regime, right? For constant temperature regimes, P2 
is equals to p 1 times e raised to the power of minus g naught by r t times delta h right e raised to the power of minus g naught by r t times delta h. Similarly, rho 2 is equals to rho 1 times e raised to the power of minus g naught by r t times delta h. So, once I know what is t is nothing but the temperature of that temperature of respective isothermal layer temperature of respective isothermal layer okay. and then I do not think there are new, uh, any other new variables that we need to discuss. So, using these equations let us now uh, write a subroutine. So, for that I will take help of MATLAB. So, I will try to first clear all the data from the memory. So, I am closing any other windows that are opened and I am clearing the screen. What I am CLC helps you let us say there is something here right. Some let us assume there is something some some details there and then when I first I would like to save this. See, this was our example 1 which we have solved in our previous lecture. I named it as performance underscore level flight I wish you should also do that. And then the second example is for uh, the, this one in, we are talking about density right. So, this is density ok. Now, I have to make it as a function that we will finally convert now first let uh, let us uh, try to write it as a normal uh, dot m file normal program. So, this will help clear all close all we will try to remove everything from its memory which is the workspace here you can see it removes everything from the memory and it will clear the editor page here clear the command sorry command uh, command window here right. So, so from then you start uh, writing the code ok. So, uh, first thing I would like to do is uh, consider the input of z right what is the altitude here. Let us say z is my altitude which is equals to let us say h that you are considering otherwise h h is my or z is my altitude that is considered right. So, input I will consider this as an input enter the altitude of flight in meters right. So, so, this will be an input for this uh, program ok. So, now once I get the height then I should be knowing what is the corresponding g acting at that altitude right which is g is equals to or say r the radius of earth which is why, why we need is we will we'll try to convert this geometric altitude to geopotential altitude by means of h is equals to right h is equals to r times h g right r is radius of earth small r times h g or say the h is nothing but z input here upon r times h d upon r plus h d. You can refer our uh, discussion regarding standard atmosphere. So, we have discussed a bit during this uh, during the introductory lectures of this course as well as uh, during our previous course right. In the previous course we have derived it in detail. So, r plus z right ok. So, z is nothing but the geometric altitude that you consider r z times uh, r z upon r plus z here ok which is uh, and then we need the input of this radius of earth which is 6300 and which is 6400 kilometers approximately that to be precise it is 6356766 
is the radius of earth in meters. So, for a given geometric altitude you now converted it to geopotential altitude right. So, for example, now what we uh, so first we need to see whether the input altitude whether it falls in geometric uh, isothermal layer or gradient layer. Let us say if if at all this z is greater than or equal to 0 right and z less than 11 kilometers right this is 11000 meters is not it. So, less than or equal to 11000 meters let us assume ok. So, then this falls in gradient layer right. In that case what I have is P 2 or P is equals to P naught which is at uh, at sea level let us let us say p naught is at sea level. So, p naught times t 2 upon t 1 ok t upon t naught again yeah t is the temperature at this at that particular altitude t times t naught raised to the power of we just discussed right is not it. So, this particular equations t 2 by t 1 raised to the power of minus g naught by a r. So, we are talking about this particular equation t 2 by t 1 raised to the power of minus minus uh, g naught upon a times r ok. So, for this particular gradient layer, so what we are talking if this is this falls into this category then what we are talking about is a gradient layer 1 ok. For this, what is the value of A? A is equals to minus 6.5 times 10 raised to the power of minus 3, right. We need to talk in terms of meters, we have to make sure that the units are consistent. So, lapse rate, I would like to comment this as lapse rate in Kelvin per meter right Kelvin per meter. So, before uh, ok and then this is static pressure at the required altitude ok. Uh, so, what you get here is in Pascal P A or Newton upon meter square. So, that is the output from this particular program particular uh, e uh, what you call equation ok. So, so, the script at line number 12 gives you the output of pressure static pressure at that particular altitude and then say I need to find out density. So, den let us assume den is the corresponding density at that particular altitude which is equals to den naught right that is density at sea level. Otherwise, you instead of den you can say rho r h o rho density is equals to rho naught r h uh, rho naught right times t 2 upon t 1 I am just copying this. So, t 2 upon t 1 raised to the power of minus g naught by a r. So, minus 1 right or if you take minus common it will become plus inside. So, let me I will just try to take this inside. So, this is like g naught by a r plus 1. So, hold raised to the power of minus 
uh, this will also work. Uh, you may not uh, this this extra ampersand uh, what you call brackets may not be required. So what you get is a density at the required altitude. At the required altitude in kg upon meter cube. Right. So what you get is a density at that particular altitude. Now, yeah, this is done. So, so this is what we require, right? Isn't it? But how how can this equation be? Uh, let us say the line at line number twelve. How can this script be executed? Because we have quite a good number of unknowns here, isn't it? So here p naught is unknown, t is unknown for this gradient layer at that particular altitude. A is given for this particular layer, A is known, R is unknown. So, let us initialize the un, uh, input variables here. Say R is 287 joule per kg Kelvin, right? Specific. So, this is uh, universal gas constant, gas constant for air, which is in joule per kg Kelvin, okay? per kg Kelvin. And then what do you require here is P naught, P naught at STP, P naught is uh, sorry at mean sea level P, P naught is 1.01325 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of minus 10 raised to the power of 5, right. This is in Pascal. So, one atmosphere. So, Atmos static pressure or static pressure or atmospheric pressure at sea level in Pascal and then den uh, rho naught that is density at sea level which is 1.225 kg upon meter cube right? density at C level in kg upon meter cube. Okay. And we also know what is temperature at sea level, which is 288.16 Kelvin. Temperature at sea level in Kelvin. Okay. So, we have inputs now. So, the required inputs, but we T naught is known, P naught is known in order to solve this equation I need to know wh what are the variables on the right hand side, right. P naught is known as an input, T naught is known at sea level, G naught is known, G naught is also not uh, given here. So, what we can do is uh, G is equal, G naught is equals to G naught is equals to 9.81 meters per second square. So, uh, acceleration due to gravity at missile. Okay. So G naught is given. G naught is known, and then what we need is uh, R is known. Yes. So the only unknown is T. So we know from the definition of A lapse rate, right? So we can now find out what is the T at that particular. Altitude is equals to T naught plus which we just discussed A times delta H, right? That is uh, del H, delta H. So, what is delta H? This is like temperature at the required altitude. in Kelvin. So, del H is nothing but delta H is delta H, delta underscore H. So, let it del underscore H. So, in order to execute this, uh, this script at 17, line, uh, line 17, we need to know A is input, right? T naught is input again. What is del H? So, del underscore H that we are, we considered here equals to uh, 
z minus z is the input altitude right is not it z minus 0 nothing but from sea level right is not it. So, this is like okay. So, instead of 0 what I will say is z minus h 1 here okay, where for the first layer the h 1 is 0 is not it do you accept that. So, for this first layer so the h 1 h for this first isothermal la uh, gradient layer h 1 is 0 here. So, h h 1 let us say that will be the difference there. So, then h 1 is equals to 0 here. Uh, so, gradient layer 1 that means so, so this h 1 h 1 is equals to 0 ok. So, so this will uh, get fetch me the data if not else if else if this particular z if let us say if we want to find out at 13 kilometers altitude right density and other parameters at 13 kilometer if the flight is at 13 kilometers. So, 13 kilometers talks about isothermal layer uh, which is uh, yeah this it falls somewhere here. So, 13 kilometers. So, we need to talk about equations that be corresponds to this particular isothermal layer right. So, which means we need to talk about these equations. So, instead of those which we have used for gradient layer we will just replace them by these two equations. So, that we will complete the details or modeling of isothermal layer here. So, if z is less than or if z is greater than 11 kilometers right z is greater than 11 kilometers and less than or equal to 25 kilometers right. So, we know for this particular uh, isothermal layer uh, we have constant temperature right they are characterized by constant temperature is constant temperature. So, what I will say is this is isothermal layer 1 ok and then what is h 1? h 1 for this is 11 kilometers right because it starts at 11 kilometers. So, this is the starting of that h 1 talks about starting of that particular layer right. So, and then T of this at this particular uh, condition is the temperature at for uh, input temperature for this isothermal layer for example, for this isothermal layer P 1 corresponds to this particular point at 11 kilometers P 1 corresponds to 11 kilometers and P 2 corresponds to the any other point within this isothermal. Similarly, rho 1 here corresponds to density at 11 kilometers for this isothermal layer and similarly yeah T 1 corresponds to and T 1 is equals to T 2 and it is equivalent to this particular value 216.66. So, the T 1 there or the T there is equals to 216.66 Kelvin ok. So, what is what is P 1? So, which you can identify from here from the above program if you plug in let us say if you plug in uh, what is at 11 kilometers you can use those values and find out what is P 1 which we which I al already did it. So, what I will do is, so P 1 at this particular altitude is equals to 2 to 7 double 0, double 2 7 double 0. This is in again uh, Pascal, I am not uh, giving the details, I uh, say otherwise this is static pressure at 11 kilometers at 11000 meters ok and then density 1 ok is equals to what is the density at 11 kilometers which is 0 0.36480 0 0.36480.
density at 11 kilometers. Seven thousand meters. So, so I have the initial conditions for this uh, particular. Uh, yeah. So, for this particular isothermal layer, right? And then I'll be able to find out what is the corresponding pressure P. So, pressure P is equals to P one because we are talking about isothermal layer the initial conditions of isothermal layer we considered as p1 here right isn't it so for this is the p1 for this particular isothermal layer and whereas p1 for the gradient layer is nothing but p0 right that is when you talk about next isothermal layer then you know, then, then p0 may be different you know so next uh, next gradient layer let us say so for example if you consider the next gradient layer here then P1 should correspond to the pressure at 25 kilometers altitude, static pressure and density at 25 kilometers altitude, right? That you need to take them as an input. Okay. So P1 is a P is equals to at that uh, particular altitude in isothermal layer, which is P1, which is at 11 kilometers altitude, times e raised to the power of minus g naught by a r minus sorry R t g minus of g naught by R t times delta h. So, g naught. So, I will write g naught times delta h in the numerator multiplied by uh, del underscore h. So, delta h I will copy this for this particular uh, isothermal layer what is the corresponding delta h difference in altitude. So, there is a small correction here, we have considered h 1 as uh, 11000 meters, right. So, this is in geometric altitude, we need to convert because z is in geopotential, h 1 should also be in ge geopotential altitude. So, we need to convert uh, this uh, this h 1, the initial um, height of this isothermal layer to geopotential altitude, either no, we can use this particular equation again in, and replacing z with uh, that h 1 here like otherwise. So, let us see you can either give this as an input for example, r into z. So, here h 1 is 11000 11, where I need to first give the details of r, r is let us say I execute this program till this, uh, no, okay. So, I will enter the value of r here. So, this is like calculator. So, so, so r times 11000 upon r plus 11000. So, you can directly use this as h 1 there, if not what you can do? You simply consider this like r is anyways uh, given as an input to this program. So, r times h 11000 upon r plus h r plus that is initial altitude of this isothermal layer which is 11000 meters okay so it is now converted to geopotential altitude so z minus h1 uh, z minus h1 will give you the delta h for this particular isothermal layer and the corresponding pressure at this particular altitude static pressure at this required altitude this is what this particular equation returns and then so yeah g naught 
times del h, I am sorry, there, there is something more here, g naught times del h upon d naught times del h upon r t, right, capital R times what is the corresponding temperature for this isothermal layer, which is T to 16.66 Kelvin. Okay. So, in the corresponding density at this row, so since so this is den 1 or row 1, uh, otherwise I can say or h o row 1, this is like row 1 times yeah e raised to the power of minus g naught times delta h upon r t. So, this is the density at that required altitude in kg per meter cube. That is it, uh, we are more or less done with the required outputs and end, right. So, so, this ends the if loop here, if the entered input value is in this range like a gradient layer range. So, this particular uh, block of the code will be executed and else, else if it falls in this uh, isothermal range. So, this particular code will be executed. So, after that we will end this program. So, what I need as an output is 